Hey kids, do you like learning? Can I offer you some interesting facts about Archaea? All bacteria used to be called bacteria, if only bacteria, but that all changed in 1977. 70, sev, sev, 70. Seb, Seb, 70, 1977. Two guys named Carl Wos and George E. Fox decided that Archaea needed their own group. This group was to be called Archaea Bacteria, and that's where all the extreme bacteria went. These were your normal, everyday, methane producing, thermal vent inhabiting buddies. The Archaea Bacteria are not only set apart by where they live, but also how they are built. They have protein-like cell walls and membrane chemistry. They also have distinctive ribosomes, while most bacteria don't. The rest of the bacteria that don't live in extreme environments or have special buildups get put in the eubacteria category. The eubacteria can also be referred to as real bacteria. Believe it or not, the RK bacteria group can be classified even more. It's not that hard to believe. The three main classes you hear about when talking about archaea bacteria are halophiles, methanogens, and thermophiles. Halophiles can survive in places of extreme salt levels. Most things would shrivel up and die due to osmosis in that kind of environment. Methanogens can survive in places that produce methane, and thermophiles can survive in extremely hot or cold environments. lovely day in Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, looks like I tripped over some Archaea. One of the first places Archaea was found was in the hot springs of Yellowstone National Park. Archaea are some of the only living organisms we know of that can survive in extreme environments. They can live in thermal vents. The temperature in those can reach over 202 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Celsius. They can live in alkaline waters and acid waters. Petroleum deposits deep underground. Places that produce methane, such as digestive tracts of cows or termites. And even in the open ocean, when they're abundant in the open plankton of the sea. Just like any other living thing, Archaea made many adaptations to survive in the crazy places they live in. Over time, they've evolved many different protein features for each environment. Like the classification of Archaea, there are tons of different protein features which have been helpfully classified into three separate groups. You have your thermophilic proteins, you have your psychrophilic proteins, you have your halophilic proteins. Thermophilic proteins help archaea survive in very high temperatures. Their core reflects water and they have lots of stationary electric charges. <laughs> psychrophilic proteins help archaea survive in very cold environments. Their cores also repel water, but not as much as the thermophilic proteins did. Their surface also has less electricity on it than you might find on other proteins. Halophilic proteins help archaea survive in extreme ionic conditions. They're able to survive by their negatively charged surface, which is caused by acidic amino acid content and peptide insertions. Me and my fellow Archaea reproduce asexually through a process called binary fission. Basically, one Archaea copies all of its DNA and then it splits into two. Dose. Two. Two of them. You don't run this cell. Actually, I do.